Welcome to this week's video. This week we're talking about non-parametric methods. Specifically, we're gonna focus on Spearman's row or Spearman's correlation. Also gonna to touch on just a few of the other, how do you find some of the non-parametric non -parametric methods in the other tests that we've done. All right, so let's jump over into JASP. So I created a data set here. Uh, we have variables A, B, and C. And in order to get into regression in general, we're gonna click on the regression and then correlation for again right now we're talking about if you will a pairwise regression so we want two variables so let's start with variable a and variable b and as you know from i don't know week two or something it defaults to pearson's r pearson's correlation now what we want to do is know when to use Pearson's and when to use Spearman's and the, the key in knowing that is that Pearson's R is looking at a straight line correlation. That's all that it does. It looks for a straight line relationship, a straight line correlation. So in order to make the distinction, you want to click on your scatter plot and look at the distribution. And I also want to, just, uh, I want to highlight this display pairwise here. If by clicking this, it gives you kind of a, a more uh, cleaner look if you will otherwise it puts everything in a matrix but by looking at this distribution the, the key that I want you to focus in on is that this is a curved relationship now it is monolithic so it is going in one direction it's not curving up and then curving back down um, but if you will what you see is kind of an exponential relationship as you can see, the straight line doesn't fit it very well because over here it's you know it's above the line, then it's below the line, then it's back above the line. If you will, it, it's an exponential relationship. So when you see a scenario like this where the, it's a curved relationship, then what is better than Pearson's R is Spearman's row. And again, look how simple this is. I'm simply going to click Spearman's row and uncheck Pearson's R. But before I uncheck it, I do want to just point it out. Um, so notice that Pearson and Spearman, you can look at both of them, but again, it's really the plot that's gonna give you the information that you wanna see. So if you see a curved plot, that's your, that's your clue, that's your key that you should be using Spearman's. But notice that Pearson's R and Spearman's row, Spearman's row is capturing the data better. And it's, you know, it's a 0.97, where Pearson's is a 0.87. Um, Spearman is, is better capturing the data, okay? And again, there are scenarios where Pearson's will not be significant and Spearman's will be significant. And that's when it's really key that you're using the right method. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Pearson's R. I wanna point out a couple other little things. First off, the sample size. I do need the sample size in my APA format, so I'm gonna check on that. And then let's jump over and look at the APA format. So APA format, first off, if you remember, uh, Pearson's R is just an R here, but here we have an R sub S, and that S represents Spearman's R, Spearman's correlation. And now all we need is the sample size in the brackets, and then the Spearman's row, the actual statistic. And if I jump right back over there, again, you see Spearman's row here. That's the 0.972 and then my p-value. And so the other thing I want to highlight is I do want you to make your conclusion statement, right? So there is a significant correlation between variables A and B. If you will, I would even put in here, there's a significant positive correlation. And again, how do I know it's positive? Because the 0.972 is positive uh, for beginners. And then also notice that the curve is going up. So that's representative of a positive correlation. All right, so next I want to look at uh, one more example. And so I'm going to go to uh, regression and linear co oh, yep, correlation, sorry. And this time I'll look at variable A and variable C. And again, I'm going to check all the same things. Let's scroll down so I can see everything. So again, I'm going to check. I'm going to start by looking at the scatter plot first. I'm going to turn on this pairwise so it gives me that cleaner look. And now notice that again, I have a curved relationship, but now it's a negative. All right. So again, it's the same type of, you know, I'm seeing a curved relationship. The line is not fitting it very well. Um, and I'm noticing this curve. And again, that's my clue that I should flip it over from Pearson's to Spearman's. All right. So again, Spearman's, and I want to click on the sample size again. And so I would say, first off, is it significant? Yes, my p-value is less than 0.05, so it is significant. 
Um, and then I would say, hey, there's a there's a there's a significant negative relationship between variables A and variable C. And then my APA format would be parentheses R sub S brackets my sample size of 60 close brackets equals my Spearman's row negative 0.963 comma and p is less than 0 0.001 all right now to close out this video uh, this is a much quicker one i do want to just point out a few things first off other non-parametric tests remember with t-tests and ANOVA that, that the assumptions for both of those is that you have normal data and so when you graph the data and you notice that it has large outliers or it's highly skewed to the right or to the left, either way, if, it's, if you're dealing with skewed data, you should be using non-parametrics because an assumption of a t-test and the assumption of ANOVA is that they're both normal data. So I do want to point these out for you. Simply, if I go into t-test and I say go to independent samples t-test, the non-parametric method in independent samples t-test is called Mann-Whitney. So all I, again, all I have to do here is if I graph my data and see that it's not normal, um, then I'm going to click on Mann-Whitney and I'm going to run the non-parametrics test. Same thing with paired samples t-test. The non-parametrics test here is called Wilcoxon sign rank test. Again, that's the non-parametric test. If you will, it's the more conservative test. Um, so it will be harder to get a significant p-value, but there are moments when you need to use it. You need to use it if your underlying data set is not normal. And then additionally, I do want to also highlight the ANOVA. So if I go into ANOVA and then ANOVA, um, on this one, again, I'd set my, my scenario, set my data up, set my variables up, and then I generally click on descriptives. Uh, but notice at the very bottom, it says non-parametrics. And so when I click on non-parametrics here, it gives me the Krusky-Wallace test, which is the non-parametrics equivalent to an ANOVA test. All right, that's this week's video. Um, you all have a great week.